DS7 is a complete system for automatically testing the mechanical properties of soils in your laboratory and is the result of many years of research at the headquarters of ELE International. ELE's long experience in the design of soil test equipment has allowed us to create a package which is both powerful and easy to use, whilst at the same time being strictly compliant with major international test standards. The previous few pictures hinted at some of the tests available under DS7. Here's the complete list. Anyone who's familiar with soil testing in a laboratory will immediately recognise these as industry standard tests. And speaking of standards, DS7 can perform most tests in full compliance with either British or American standards. Let's now take a whistle-stop tour of some of DS7's major features. For anyone who would like more technical information, a technical training video is also available. DS7 can display numerical data in any of three engineering units systems. Once the units have been selected, all values on screen and in reports will be converted and displayed with the appropriate unit symbols. Here's a fragment of a report showing some quantities in grams and millimetres corresponding to the SI system of units. DS7 contains a wealth of information available at the touch of a button. Just press the F1 key on your PC at any time to get help. Let's take a quick look at the help menus. The whole DS7 user manual is available in the help screens and is indexed and searchable for the fastest access to practical help and guidance. This is a major resource of information about how to run soil tests under DS7 and should always be consulted when in doubt about a procedure. In the space of the next one minute, we'll see how to connect a new machine to DS7 ready for testing. Now, one dimensional consolidation test requires one transducer, and we've previously set up a transducer by connecting it to the data logger on channel 2. So let's just check that's working. That seems to be OK. So now we can connect that to the machine in the software. We already have one called Console 1 so we'll set up a new machine and give it the name console 2 second consolidation machine we then need to select the test type in this case it's a one dimensional consolidation test and the standard and we'll use British standard ok that select the transduce that we previously connected check that all is well and OK that. And in just less than one minute, we've set up our new machine, which is now ready for a new test. So if we press the new test button, we can see the new machine comes up on our list of machines ready for testing. There's one other aspect of machine setting up, which is optional, but worth mentioning because it's very useful and that's default machine settings. This is an area where you can set default parameters for particular machines in order to avoid retyping numbers when you run a test. Here we're putting in default information for this particular consolidation cell including a correction for the frame deformation which is required by the standards. This information will automatically be called up 
and used in any maths when a test is run on this particular piece of apparatus. It's another great feature within DS7 which is designed to make your soil testing simpler, faster and less prone to errors. Everything we've done up to now has been to do with setting up a machine and is therefore done only once normally. From here on in, this is where the user would start when running a test. This is the sample information form. This is a place where you can record information on the customer, the contract and unique sample references generated. To save typing, if we've previously run a test with a similar sample for the same job, we can just recall the same information and this will automatically be filled into the form. Electronic input via the AGS format is also available. And we can come back to this form at any time during a test in order to modify or change any data should we find that necessary. Where required by the standard, relevant information is taken from this form and used on the report. OK, we've input some sample data. Now let's have a look at some of the screens involved in actually running the test. On pressing the button marked Monitor Test, we get a list of the tests in progress. In this case, we're interested in the top one, Console 2, which is shown as between stages. Pressing OK here takes us through to the test monitoring screen, which is really DS7's nerve centre. All tests running under DS7 are controlled and monitored from this screen here. At the top left hand side you can see information which uniquely identifies the job and the sample. This information helps to avoid any confusion about the test we're currently monitoring. Details of the current and previous stages are also given for reference. In the centre of the screen are two large graphs. The crucial parameters for any particular test are displayed on these as the data is taken in real time from the data logger. Below the graphs we can see displays of the number of readings taken and the number of readings yet to take in this test. To the right is a slider switch marked Zoom Live Readings. This is to allow you to monitor in real time parameters from across the laboratory on a large display such as the one shown. At the top right are the control buttons. These are used for monitoring and controlling the test we're currently looking at. Let's take a look at how we start a loading stage for our odometer test. Here's a list of the possible stages. Select loading stage and OK. As simple as that. The following screens then lead the operator through the process of adding the required weight and starting the test. Down the left hand side is a set of simple instructions for the operator and this is typical of running any test within DS7. The standard for a one dimensional consolidation test recommends that certain stresses are used and DS7 helpfully lists these on a menu for easy selection. Having selected the stress, DS7 then provides a calculator for calculating the required weight. DS7 is based around practical soil testing and here's a good example. We may find that we don't have exactly 0.48 kilograms in weight, but we have a 0.5 kilogram weight. Well, DS7 allows us to do the calculation in reverse, calculating the stress from that 0.5 kilograms weight, which in this case is 6.2 kPa. And when we're happy with that, we press the continue button, and this brings up a final check. We can either start the test and go into the countdown at this point, or abort. We'll go into the countdown which has previously been set at 4 seconds. This gives us time to start the machine. Notice that the status bar towards the lower part of the screen has now turned to yellow, indicating that the test is running. Also data is now visible on the two real-time graphs. Note also that the two graphs show the information on two different time scales. The left-hand graph shows square root minutes and the right-hand graph shows log minutes. The reason for this is that the standard specifies both of these timescales in its calculations section and so it's useful during the test to be able to see the data on both of these two timescales.
Let's now jump forward in time to a point where we have a little more data. As you can see, 45 readings have now been taken, and we've taken the weight off the odometer, and so the compression gauge has bounced back, and you can see that on both scales here. Let's now take a look at this full screen button up on the top right hand side which we haven't yet seen. This is a useful facility for looking at the graphs in more detail and also for printing the graphs. The graphs have comprehensive zoom and pan features which are accessed via these controls on the top right here. Let's zoom into this area on the left hand side. We've now blown that part of the graph up to fill the display. The background and foreground colours are also easily controlled to suit your artistic whims. This is actually quite useful for presentation work. And at any time we can print either or both of the graphs just by pressing the print button here. Just to show that DS7 is truly multitasking, Let's go and have a look at another test which was previously set up and is now running. There's a direct shear test being run to ASTM standards and its status is running so let's take a look at that. As we can see the current test stage is a consolidation stage and the previous stage was the initialization so really this test is just starting and the consolidation phase is continuing. Because this is a direct shear test, you can see on the lower part of the screen that there are three transducers showing instead of the one transducer for the odometer. If this were an effective stress test, there would be six transducers shown on this part of the screen. DS7 is intelligent. It knows which transducers and parameters to display for the particular test being viewed. It also displays these using the correct units of measurement and the symbols for those units. Performing calculations on the raw data in DS7, as required by the standards, is made very easy. Some basic information on the sample is input via a screen such as the one shown here, and then the calculations are performed via simple graphical constructions on screen, such as this one. The user typically drags the construction lines to show the graph trends on screen, as described in the standard and DS7 performs all of the calculations necessary to produce the report from this. This method of performing the calculations can save literally hours of a soil technician's time. The next and final stage of the process is to produce a report as required by the industry standards. Producing an industry standard soil test report within DS7 couldn't be simpler. The user simply points to the data file he wishes to use for the source data and then presses the Write Test Report button. The result is a standard Microsoft Word document containing all of the information that the standard requires. And because it's a standard Word document, any small additions or changes to the information are easy to make after the process is completed. Sit back for a few seconds now and watch DS7 finish the report. You can have your own logo on the top of the report if you would prefer. And we've now finished writing the report, so we've now seen the whole test process from beginning to end. We hope in this short introduction to DS7 we've been able to show you some of the major benefits of using this software. To summarise, DS7 saves you time making your lab more efficient. It walks you through tests, giving you helpful reminders at each stage. No more calculations by hand. There are pop-up calculators and automatic data analysis, thereby removing the burden from the user of error-free calculations. And most important of all, DS7 will produce reports in full compliance with your chosen soil test standard. 
If you would like further information on DS7 or have any questions about anything you've seen, take a look at the ELE website or use the contact information given at the end of this video.